welcome to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina, and I got a special guest with me, Coach Bell. Coach, how are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you guys wondering, the other half, a.k.a. that brother of mine, he's nowhere to be found. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. We miss him. Do we? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's talk about the um, introduction. Or last, we're going to recap last season. Last season's football team was 9-0, 10-1. Uh, finished the season 10-1, 9-0 in the regular season, 5-0 in the tough OA red. Um, went, in, went into University of Michigan, beat Livonia Stevenson 54-33. Went to Harper Woods week two, won 28 to six. Harper Woods would end up being the division four state champions. Beat Oxford at home week three, 38 to 14. Oxford would be a playoff team. It would not be the first time we saw Oxford. Beat West Bloomfield in a classic 17-13 classic defensive game for typically it's an offensive type of slugfest, but it was a defensive slugfest. West Bloomfield ended up being a final four team in division one. Beat Stony Creek at home 49 to 28. Stony Creek's a lot better than their record indicated. They were one win away from being a playoff team. Went to Adams, beat Rochester Adams 35 to nothing. They were also a playoff team. Won the league championship at Clarkston 42-21. Hard fought game. Had our homecoming against Farmington, won 42 to 7. Had a road classic against C.J. Carr and the Hornets of Celine and won 35-28. Went into the playoffs, beat Oxford at home 58-26. And had the district final against Clarkson where we lost 38-37 in a game that could have went either way. Um, to recap last season and what was your take on last season? Last season was a lot of fun. You know, we had a great football team. Uh, you know, it was great to see the kids play to their potential. Mm -hmm. I felt we got better every single week. Uh, they were special, no doubt about it. We had, we had some, some tremendous players. Um, and the schedule we played was, was really tough. Every game was, a, you know, mm -hmm. you, had, you had to get ready for every game. There were no easy ones in there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it was a great year. And obviously, uh, you know, we ended up losing in the second round of the playoffs, which, which was an upset. And, and uh, after the way we had handled Clarkson, the uh, a couple weeks prior in the league championship game, but uh, you know that's the playoffs. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. You know the, the the history with us in Clarkson is goes way back. Where a lot of times, who's ever won during the regular season, they get upset in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know we've played sort of multiple times in the playoffs. It's it's very hard to play somebody twice because you're making adjustments and then you look at what you're doing, and saying do we need to adjust? In, in that game in particular, that was just a great football game. Mm -hmm. You know we had multiple opportunities to win the game. You know, both teams played really, really hard. It was just a matter that they had some players that uh, made some key plays at key times, mm -hmm. kept drives alive for them. Uh, we had chances to put away, and they just they made one more play than we did. So, you know, at the end of the season, you know, I was so proud of the kids, and they were dis they were disappointed after the mm -hmm. Clarkson game. I told them, "Hey, that's high school football. You played a great game, and I can't fault your effort, your preparation. That's 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 football. You know, it's you know, we would like to win them all." But, uh, you know, we came up just a little bit short, but it wasn't because of their effort and preparation. It was just a great football game. So and I had to give credit to Clarkson the way they played that night. But overall in the season, you know, there, there were a lot of records that were set, a lot of offensive records that were set. And defensively, probably, played, you know, we had one of the best defenses that we've had in years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you throw in there, we have, we have an all-state kicker who's returning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it was just it was special all the way around. And the best part about it, you know, the coaching staff, the kids, it was just a lot of fun uh, being together. So, yeah, you know, it was, it was great, fond memories, mm -hmm. but we're ready to turn the page and get on to the season. One of the, you kind of mentioned it with playing Clarkston uh, twice on multiple occasions. Um, there had been a lot of um, questions about potentially regionalizing the playoffs. And um, then in the case of Mac Red, a lot of the Mac Red teams play each other twice usually in division play and then also into um in the playoffs um this year we had or last year we had lake orion playing oxford adams playing west bloomfield lake orion playing clarkston clarkson playing west bloomfield a lot of those matchups happened when in division what's your take on um playing on playing teams twice in playoffs you know what it's it's 
unfortunately, it's it's uh, it's something that happens a lot because of the good football we play in the area, and we have mm-hmm. a lot of playoff teams in our area. But nobody likes it, and I and I say that because one of the the fun things in the playoffs is playing at different venues, playing different teams, teams mm-hmm. you don't traditionally see. But the problem is that the way the M- MHSAA does it, they they group you. They group you by uh, geography, mm-hmm. and they, you know, if for one thing, it's it's it, it has a different effect on us where we have a bunch of schools right next to each other. Mm-hmm. But when you get you know north of the Zawaki Bridge or in more rural areas, and schools are more spread out, it might make more mm-hmm. sense. So teams aren't traveling hundreds of miles for first right. round games. So I get it, and they try to keep it consistent. You know, mm-hmm. one through eight, division one through eight in the playoffs. So right. it's just one of those things that's. Uh, um, it's a it's an unintended consequence for the way that we run our playoffs. We did mm-hmm. put forth through the coaches association and also through the uh, uh, I serve on the MHS or M- the uh, MHSAA football committee as mm-hmm. well, and we put forth a recommendation which came from the coaches uh, to regionalize the playoffs. Basically, mm-hmm. saying this and said instead of circling districts of four, circle groups of eight, and then then seed them based upon your MPR rating, which they keep track of, mm-hmm. you know, or your playoff points, rather, which they keep track of. So the odds now of seeing those same teams the next week you know, become less, mm-hmm. and you might see different teams. So unfortunately, that, uh, that didn't pass. But you know, in last year, you know, last year the, uh, those matchups, it wasn't just us, the fact that we turn around and we play Clarks or we play Oxford, whoever it might be. Mm-hmm. There were multiple games last year that I felt bad for those teams where Midland and Midland Dow played week nine, they turned around again, played week 10. Birmingham Seahome, Birmingham Groves played week nine, they turned around and played week 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, Davison and uh, Lapeer. Lapeer played uh, week nine, they turned around and played week 10. That's just, again, that's just, it, it's, it's tough. And, and I guess you have to walk in, you know, you have to walk in those shoes to, to understand it. Mm-hmm. It's nice playing a different opponent. And uh, but you know again it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about players that are returning. One of the strengths, some of the strengths that you have is you return Tier Hill, Trish Hill, quarterback or returning quarterback, the O line, secondary, uh, slot backs, and the kicker. Um, talk about the strengths of talk about this. Definitely talk about the strengths that you have and also the challenges that you have. Um, Billy Roberson, Katie DeGreffen Reed, DeBrincat, all those guys are, you know, have moved on to, and others have moved on to um, college life. Um, talk about the challenges of replacing quality depth, but also the strength that you have back. We return, uh, we return, I want to say seven to eight starters on offense. So mm-hmm. we return, obviously, uh, T.R. Hill. Three year quarter, three year starter quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know, it is huge for us. One of the best quarterbacks in the state of Michigan. Uh, we return an offensive line uh, from uh, Brennan Eliason, um, Landon Morris, Brennan at tackle, Landon at guard. Mm-hmm. Uh, we return uh, Jacob Escobedo, three year starter mm-hmm. at left tackle. Um, we have Jackson Vasquez at slot. Mm-hmm. We return Jamari Cooper, who's going to come in. He played outside last year. He's coming inside this year. He'll be in the slot. Uh, we have Ryan Rushlow, who really played his way into some uh, tremendous, you know, a lot of playing time last year before he got injured. Um, Ryan has had a great summer. Mm-hmm. He's going to start for us outside when we go with our tight end sets. Right. Ryan will move inside. So um, we return a lot of firepower on offense. You know, obviously, we've got to figure out who's going to, who's going to be our, our running back, but we've got, uh, you know, Trey Pacmaro was our backup last year, and Trey's mm-hmm. probably our leading candidate. But we've got multiple players behind him that are going to vie for playing time. So it might be more by committee because Trey starts for us in defensive secondary as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got to replace the center and the guard up front on the offensive line. But, again, we've got some good kids there. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be big and strong up front. Uh, we, we do have a, uh, a transfer that has moved into the district, um, Kyle England. Mm-hmm. From, uh, he, he played at Detroit Old Redford. He's going to play one of the wide receiver spots. Uh, he's been tremendous all summer. So, you know, we've got, uh, we've got talent at the skilled spots. We're big up front. We return a lot at quarterback. We're going to have talented guys running the ball. So, you know, we should be able to score a lot of points. I mean, I, I'm really happy with what we got coming back offensively. You know, defensively, 
Uh, we've got, uh, I think we're going to have a great defensive line. We'll mm -hmm. have, we'll have the TNT, who are really, really good. Uh, Parker Brissett. Uh, Brendan Nepchuk mm -hmm. comes back from, he started last year. Lane Garris got a lot of time last year. He's back. Uh, kind of holding everything better, together back there is Peyton McIntyre, who's one of our linebackers. Mm -hmm. And then we return three out of four in the secondary from Austin Kahn to AJ Lights uh, to Trey Pacmara. And then we have Grady Harbin stepping in, uh, who Grady was our nickel last year, got a lot of playing time back there. So he'll step mm -hmm. in and be a fourth guy in the secondary, we, you know, we anticipate. So we're very experienced in the secondary. You know, we do have to re we do have we, we we do we lost three really good linebackers. Mm -hmm. um, we do have to replace those three, but we've got some great kids who have worked hard all summer. We you know we've got talent. We've got people. It's just you know there are gonna be new bodies out there. Mm -hmm. So again, defensively, you know I think we, you know right, we're we're gonna be we're gonna be athletic. We're gonna be able to run to the ball. We've got a good secondary, which allows us to be a little more aggressive, uh, like as we were last year. Um, so we're really excited about where we are defensively. Um, our kicking game, we return the All-State kicker, mm -hmm. Will Hoffman. But, you know, he's as good as anybody we've ever had. He also punts mm -hmm. for us. So uh, Will also might play some outside linebacker for us. One of the biggest changes that we have too defensively is we have a new defensive coordinator, Russ mm -hmm. Purdy, takes over for Ricky Powell. As Ricky, uh, you know, was able to uh, go on and become the head coach at Stony Creek. So we're really mm -hmm. happy for Ricky there. But Russ has been a linebacker coach for us the last couple of years. He's a previous high school defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of we, we made sure that Russ was ready. You know, Russ was in the position. So, mm -hmm. you know, we know Ricky was, was a great coach and going to get a job somewhere someday. So, we wanted Russ to be ready to go, and so it's been a real smooth transition there as well. Talk about the um, the JV group from last year. They went. They were six and three last year. Um, how then a lot of them move up to varsity, a lot of them will move up to varsity. Obviously they were smaller in numbers, but definitely they were, it's a big leap from JV to varsity. Talk about the, um, the players coming up from the JV program up to the varsity. Well, just, you know, there's, there's too many just to mention by mm -hmm. name. Uh, and they're all going to be competing for jobs, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of good players. Uh, you know, the coaching staff down there did a great job getting them ready. And uh, we were able to spend a lot of time with a bunch of them, and we bring a bunch up for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, so we really got a chance to work with them then. They're going to fill some key roles. You know, that, that's, I think that's a strength is, you know, we'll be, you know, it's, it, we have a, last year we had a good mixture of juniors and seniors. Mm -hmm. This year, you know, offensively we might be a little senior heavy, but we'll have some key juniors in there. And on the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, it'll be a good mixture of both. So yeah, those guys will play a key role. Some of the nice things about the players is they were all, there. many of them are multi-sport athletes. Um, many of them have done basketball, lacrosse, baseball, wrestling, hockey, track, volleyball, powerlifting. Talk about multi-sport athletes. You know, it's, it's, our best players are multi-sport athletes. My five captains this year are all multi-sport athletes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, it's something we believe in at Lake Orion. You know, that, you know, sometimes kids specialize, and that'll take care of mm -hmm. itself. But as young athletes, they need to play as many sports as they can while they can. It makes them a better athlete. I don't care, you know, uh, Jackson Vasquez is, is, a, is a great lacrosse player. Well, he mm -hmm. competes all year long in lacrosse, and the fact that he competes just makes him a better athlete. And, and so he's used to those key situations. Mm -hmm. um, AJ Lights is a lacrosse kid. Landon Morris is one of the state's best wrestlers. Mm -hmm. You know, Trey is uh, uh, Trey Pacmar is runs track. Mm -hmm. T.R. Hill is the starting center fielder on the baseball team. So all those things help. And I, you know, I look back at, you know, you look at some of the best athletes that we've had come through. They've been multiple sport kids. You mm -hmm. know, I look at Andrew Parker. Andrew Parker last year was an All State free safety for us. Andrew Parker was also an All State lacrosse player. Mm -hmm. Andrew Parker was also a really good basketball player. So. You know, it's a matter of, of uh, the more sports you play, I think the kids enjoy it more. Mm -hmm. They don't get burned out on one sport, but it also makes them better athletes. All right. Any final thoughts before we go to take a break? No, no. Just happy to talk about next year. Oh, yes. We'll be right back with Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. Orion Neighborhood Television is your community media outlet. Our mission is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. 
For more than 35 years, ONTV has offered video production classes to residents of all ages and provides them with the equipment and facilities to produce their own programs. Not only are residents encouraged to produce programs, but ONTV staff produces programs that promote local nonprofits and community groups like the Chamber of Commerce, the Orion Township Public Library, the Lake Orion Lions Club, and the Orion Arts Center, to name a few. ONTV has been um, very important for all our events. We have our community Dragon on the Lake and Art and Flower Fair. We also have our holiday market, and um, they're always out there promoting us and um, covering our events, but also promoting through um, on-site interviews at the studio, which are very helpful, and to have the footage after for us to be able to use in our marketing materials and to put on our Facebook, it's been really beneficial for us. Yes, ONTV has just been a great partner. Um, we're so thankful for them. And what they do is they really come to all of our events, especially our ribbon cuttings, having their ribbon cuttings documented so that they can archive it, put it in their business history, post it on social media, means so much to our small business owners. They've really never seen anything like that before and that's what's so unique about the Orion community and ONTV is that they're always there for us. Last year they did 18 ribbon cuttings. They stay from the start to the finish. They interview the small business owners and we all just couldn't be more grateful. That exposure is just critical to us. We have to get the word out there about how people can volunteer more. That That's a, a, a thing that's becoming less and less important to people in this world. And the more we can get the word out with your help, the better off we all are in the community. The staff ventures out into the community to cover events like parades, festivals, concerts, and high school sports. And for more than 30 years, ONTV has provided the equipment and staffing needed to televise township and village meetings live to Lake Orion residents. In Michigan, it's a unique model, and I don't know how it works in other states, but in Michigan specifically, we don't have to pay to put the equipment in our, our facilities that, so we can broadcast these meetings. And government transparency, it's not just a buzzword, it's, it's required uh, in today's day and age. Um, but the fact that our residents aren't paying for that through their property taxes is, is, is invaluable in my opinion. The fact that it's funded through these franchise fees that the cable companies have paid forever, um, a few pennies literally on, on cable bills helps fund uh, this really important, um, you know, government isn't trusted anymore. This is one way um, people trust us because we're closer to them, but everything we do is in the light of day. And it's thanks to this funding that exists, a uh, really unique mechanism that allows us to continue to, to give that to our residents. I think it's mission critical for clarity, honesty, and uh, uh, just getting the message of local government out to its residents. I mean, social media has become a way to do that, but on TV is on social media. So uh, I, I don't think that we can broadcast meetings in any other way or better uh, at a better rate or a better price than what ONTV provides. ONTV also provides the video equipment that Lake Orion High School students use as they prepare for a career in broadcasting. The franchise fees, the PEG fees uh, that fund ONTV and the Cable Commission actually benefit and fund our program as well. Uh, we're able to ask for grants from that organization, from ONTV, from the Cable Commission to help us. Uh, we're very fortunate to have one of the best broadcast programs in the state, if not the country. Um, and they're a huge funding revenue source for us uh, to be able to provide our students, past and present, with amazing technology that's very comparable to what the, the, the professionals use in the industry. ONTV's podcast studio and training give producers an opportunity to educate and entertain listeners. To sign up for classes or for more information, call 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. Welcome back to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Taramina, co-host of Between Terminas and a host of History Now here on ONTV. Coach, how are you doing? Doing great. That's good. Um, I want to talk about the, the coaches on the programs. First, the varsity coaching staff. First, about yourself. You're the current athletic director. Um, how long you've been doing this? Well, this will be this will be my eighth year mm -hmm. as the athletic director, thirtieth mm -hmm. year in Lake Orion Schools. 
uh, as, as the head coach at Lake Orion, um, this is my 22nd year as head coach at Lake Orion, but I've been I mean, coaching football for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a labor of love and, you know, it's uh, I'm fortunate in the athletic office, uh, Terry Lauer, my athletic assistant, does a great job and, you know, we're able to make sure that uh, we can run the athletic department mm -hmm. uh, and I can still have time to coach football. Talk about the assistant coaches that you have on the varsity staff. You know, I've got a great staff. Many of them have been with me for a number of years. From uh, uh, John Blackstock, who's been with me since, you know, since uh, 1998. Off of the Waldo uh, track coach. Yes. <laughs> I uh, had to say that. <laughs> Brad Fisher um, coaches our quarterbacks, does mm -hmm. a great job. Brad's been with us since 2005. Mike Heath coaches our running backs, and Mike has been with us since the early 2000s. Um, DJ Reed uh, is our wide receiver coach, and DJ mm -hmm. played at Central Michigan, does a great job, and he's been with us for a number of years now. Uh, Andrew LaFada is our offensive line coach, and Andrew was a longtime coach at Canton, was a former head coach, does a great job, uh, so great to have him. Brian Gannon mm -hmm. uh, is our defensive line coach, and Brian coached for a number of years at Lapeer, uh, played in college, and does a great job with our defensive line. He's been with us now a number of years. Obviously, Russ Purdy coaches linebackers. Rob karagosian has been in the program for a number of years now. He's our outside linebacker coach. Uh, John is coaches secondary. Um, Jeff Heath uh, is back, moved to the area. Jeff is mm -hmm. going to be uh, uh, co helping with the secondary and working with special teams as well. Mm -hmm. uh, then Eric Jennings, you know, Eric's been with us again since 1998, and Eric does, you know, he's, he coaches our tight ends. Um, he also is, is, I refer to him as our, our special assistant to the football program because he does it all from mm -hmm. equipment to takes care of all our video stuff to you name it, Eric does it. He's, he's our MVP of our staff. When you talk about Mr. L.O., Coach E's got, even though he went to Oxford, Coach E's got to be the M Mr. L.O. in terms of he does everything. Yeah, he does. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, um, so no, we're really, really excited about our staff. And I hope I didn't forget anybody because they're all, they're all so important. Talk about the JV staff. Well, our JV staff, um, you know, uh, Corey Bell mm -hmm. is in his second year as our JV coach, and he helps us on Friday nights. Um, I, I, I did forget one guy that I got to mention oh. for the varsity staff, Doug yep. Babcock. Doug is oh, our, yes. our offensive assistant who's up in the press box for mm -hmm. us on game days, and Doug is a longtime college football coach, coach in high school for many years. He's a great asset to have up there as well. Mm -hmm. But Corey um, and Jacob Simon, you know, Corey's the head coach. Jacob is the uh, assistant coach, and, and they've they've got multiple assistants as well in the JV. But we got you know we've got two uh, really good coordinators. Corey runs the offense. Jacob runs the defense. Mm -hmm. And Corey's you know Corey's got head coaching experience at Avondale. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to have a, a varsity level head coach running your JV. Mm -hmm. And then Corey comes up and helps us on Fridays as well. So he he sees a big picture gets our kids ready and does, does a great job there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Max Hornifer, obviously who played for us. Max is, is our head freshman coach. Mm -hmm. And James Cathcart, who played for us, is a defensive coordinator down there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, guys that we also have on staff that play for us, Trent Elkins mm -hmm. uh, coaches the uh, defensive line on the freshman level. Blair Williams coaches the offensive line on the JV level. Mm -hmm. Kevin Kelly's back this year, and Kevin uh, is gonna help with freshmen on the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Steve Garver's coming back to help, That's the, help the I JVs. Well. <laughs> so it's nice having these guys that have played for us, you know, coming back. We've got, you know, probably, uh, you know, five or six guys that have played for us that are back in the program coaching. And uh, it's great to have them back because obviously football was uh, a positive experience for them mm -hmm. and they're helping to pass it on to the young guys. One guy that we lost and just his work schedule didn't work out, but he's a tremendous coach, uh, Derek Williams. And Derek, Coach linebackers for us last year, and, and uh, his work schedule that doesn't allow him to coach this year, mm -hmm. but he was phenomenal. Just a former player, and just did a great job. And you know, it's it's great when you can bring back former players who played the right way, coached the right way. You know, it just it just really helps the program. Mm -hmm. Talk about the middle school levels, um, the middle school, how the middle school. Um, you have two. You have Lake Orion Green, Lake Orion White. Uh, seventh and eighth grade teams. Talk about the middle school levels and how they help. Well, they got, you know, four, program. it just, it gives, there's, we have four teams, two seventh grade, two eighth grade. Uh, very good coaches down there as well. Some, a lot of, some have high school coaching experience. Some, mm -hmm. some played in college. Uh, and it's just, you know, the idea there is, is to uh, give our kids, as many kids that want to play football in the district, an opportunity to play football, be well coached, learn the fundamentals, have some fun, play for your school, 
dressed in the green and white, and you know, and our programs have been very successful. And you know, and it's it's about you know, it, it is the younger they get, it's more about fundamentals and having fun, mm -hmm. uh, but still trying to be successful as well. It's school sports mm -hmm. and our and our foot and it's 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 our feeder program. They do a great job. We support them as much as we can, and uh, you know, the, it's. You know, our numbers are good coming to the high school of kids wanting to play football this year. The freshman level, you know, we're going to have over 50 players on our freshman team, which is a credit to mm -hmm. our middle school program. Mm -hmm. So if they're not doing a good job, then we're not going to see the kids, you know, at the high school level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Talk about the youth levels. Um, there's different levels of football. Um, you've seen youth football. You've seen tackle football. Talk about the def different levels of football. In the well, younger levels. Obviously, we've got, uh, you know, we have our youth league, and, uh, you know, the Dragon Foundation runs the youth league and the youth cheer, you know, and in the demand for, the demand for roster spots uh, has exceeded the number of roster spots we have available. I mean, there's, there's no, any more spaces. Kids want to play. Kids are, you know, which is a great thing. You know, great. kids, mm -hmm. so our youth league coaches are doing a good job. We also, and this is through uh, John Blackstock's leadership, our rookie tackle program has just exploded as well. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a tiered program where you have, just like in baseball, you might go from t-ball to machine pitch to coach pitch to player pitch. There's a tiered process. In football, we now have, you have flag football, which is tremendous, and kids can play that as long as, you know, hopefully they play that as long as they, they want. Uh, but they can move into rookie tackle, which is a scaled down version of regular football. Fewer players, mm -hmm. smaller field, uh, some more rules to encourage passing. It's more wide open. The kids really enjoy it. And then from there, they move into playing the full youth league where you're mm -hmm. playing actual, you know, full-size field, regular, regular football into middle school. So it's all about being age appropriate, making sure kids have a positive experience. They learn the fundamentals. They're safe. They're well coached as they move up. That's what it's all about. Talk about the, the amount of support that I want to talk about the Community support, the parent support, and the pep club. Just it, it's all tremendous. You know, Lake Orion's a, it's a one high school town. Um, Lake Orion supports their their youth, their students. I don't care if it's marching band, I don't care if it's uh, if it's our plays, our choir, our robotics. It doesn't matter. You know, we've got a strong group of parents that support uh, what we do. And it's also an, it's also a sports town. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lake oh, yeah. Orion, Lake Orion loves its football. Mm -hmm. they, and Friday night football at Lake Orion is special. We go on the road. There's many times when we'll have more people on the visiting side than they'll have on the mm -hmm. home side. So, you know, and the communities are so supportive of our programs. Uh, you know, contributing and donating things to our programs. So, I mean, it's just Lake Orion's a special place to coach, special place to play, and we really make sure our kids understand that. You know, one of our one of the uh, mottos of our program we have you know, throughout the athletic program is to win for Lake Orion. Mm -hmm. And we say win for Lake Orion just because there's so many people that contribute, that have a hand in it, that take pride in what we do, that it's bigger than just us. Mm -hmm. Definitely talk about what's the theme for this year's football program? We have multiple, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, our, our motto for this mm -hmm. year is, uh, is, is, our motto is be the or. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, every year we try to come up with something that, that uh, you know, kind of helps us reinvent ourselves because mm -hmm. regardless of what you've done in past years, it doesn't do you any good for the following year. You know, we've got, we start over and we have to reinvent who we are. And, you know, be the or, you know, I, 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 I you know, P.J. Fleck has rowed the boat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's a, I read his book in the off season. It's a great book and he explains his philosophies and, and when he was talking about it, you know, there was a piece of that that really spoke out about our kids. And, and you know, be the or basically means this. You know, and it's also it's nice being in Lake Orion to have a nautical theme as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when you're in the boat, you know, when you're in a rowboat and you're at mercy, you're at the mercy of the current, mercy of the wind. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing that can get you going in the right direction is your. And every day you have to make a choice, put your oar in the water to move yourself forward. And I don't care if it's, you know, if it's in your own personal life, I don't care if it's part of a family, as a student, as an athlete, as an employee, every day you have to make a choice to put the oar in the water mm -hmm. and move your, yourself, your family, your organization, whatever it is you're part of, to move it forward, make a difference. So, that, mm -hmm. so that's what we're telling our kids. You gotta be the oar. Every day you put it in the water, you choose to make a difference. And that's what we're about. And it's like that, you know, in practice, you know, every, every, you know, football's hard. It's a tough sport, it's not for everybody. 
-hmm. you know, especially you get those hot days in, in August, you got double sessions, your body's beat up, you're sore, and you're going to practice, and we're going to ask you to work hard. Every day you got to make a choice. Put the oar in the water, let's work hard, let's make a difference. You know, you're going to that math class, that math class might be tough, you know. You can either choose to pay attention and try, you know, or you can drift off and fall behind, you know, every day. Choose to put that oar in the water and choose to make a difference. So that's what it's all about. That's a great, that's a great, great, great analogy. Great, great analogy. Any final thoughts, Coach? No, you know, again, it's, it's uh, our, our kids have worked really hard this summer. You know, they've embraced it. You know, chances they've had to, to, to get better, you know, they've done so, and we're really excited to move forward. We'll be right back with Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. We are the MHSAA, a collection of 750 high schools and 750 middle schools. From Temperance to Copper Harbor, from New Buffalo to Alpena, each year more than a quarter of a million students play one of our 28 sports. More than one and a half million fans attend our postseason games. There are 30,000 coaches and 8,000 officials, not to mention all of the volunteers. The MHSAA believes in the four S's. School sports should be safe and kept in the appropriate scope. We believe nothing beats great sportsmanship and that scholarship in the classroom is more important than excellence on the field or court. Most of all, we believe school sports should be fun. So come out and join us at a game. Support your school, support your community, and come see what the excitement is all about. Welcome back to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. Coach, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Oh, I love having you. These are, all, these are fun. Every year it gets better and better. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the schedule. Um, it's one of the, every year, year in and year out, um, Lake Orion always has one of the most challenging schedules in the state. Um, Lake Orion also competes in the Oakland Activities Association. Um, there are 22, there are 23 schools overall in the OA, 22 schools because Ferndale co-ops their team with Ferndale University. Um, this year's alignment is four divisions. Uh, five teams in the red, five teams in the white, seven teams in the blue, and five teams in the gold division. How are the divisions set? Painfully. I, yeah, I know it's painful. painfully. We've talked about this multiple yeah. times. You know, as as uh, the athletic director that oversees the football divisions, um, you know, we have a whole committee that talks about mm -hmm. it. And basically, it's it's teams that you know schools. I don't know if bargains the right word. Schools mm -hmm. try to argue about what division they, they belong in. Mm -hmm. You know, at the OA, we, we try to create divisions where there's equitable levels of competition. Mm -hmm. and, and it's hard because, you know, you've got some schools, you know, such as, you know, Lake Orion, Clarkston, you know, Oxford, Rochester Adams, West Bloomfield, you know, that, that every year they're going to be tough. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously that's our red division and they're larger schools. Mm -hmm. um, but you also and you also have some schools it's like Harper Woods, Birmingham Groves, mm -hmm. um, you know, Southfield last year when they won the state championship. You know, you have some schools that it's maybe smaller schools mm -hmm. but still play a high level of football. So they may not be red division schools, but they're in the white division. Mm -hmm. So and then there's a group of and then we have our let's go to the other end of the spectrum where you have our really small schools like Ferndale and Berkeley and Pontiac or schools that struggle like Royal Oak and or Avondale, which is a small school, they're their own separate small division. So mm -hmm. that leaves a third division of, you have a mixture of some larger schools whose programs struggle, mm -hmm. some smaller schools who are decent that can play, and it's, it's usually our largest division. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's hard. I mean, it makes scheduling hard, and you have bye weeks, and who's playing who, and crossovers, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But even then, we try to use crossovers, we try to use formulas based on, you know, the better programs, each division will cross over and play each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, this year we also use an alignment, a uh, crossover alignment uh, that factored in enrollment, mm -hmm. you know, to try to help, you know, match up larger enrollment schools, but it's never perfect. Uh, somebody's always upset that they have to play too tough a schedule, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it is what it is. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, the hard part with football is you have to win X amount of games to get in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And now it's no longer just a minimum number of games, it's how many right. playoff points you have. So that's why mm -hmm. football coaches for years have always been, trying to position their schedules to make sure that they they can 
you know, they, they can qualify for as many wins. Well, mm -hmm. for us, it's, you know, we, we have to play who we play. We know we have a tough schedule every year. Our mm -hmm. non-league games are tough. So we just have to play good football. And if we're good enough, we'll get in the playoffs. If we're not good enough, we won't get in. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's painful. Um, let's talk, speaking of the schedule, let's talk about schedule. Um, open up the season at Northville. Northville was 10-2 and two last year. They were, they were a regional finalist there in the KLA West. Well-coached, great players. First ever meeting between Lake Orion and Northville. Um, what's your take on Northville? Well, we both needed a game one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we agreed that we would go there if they would agree to play us. And uh, it's just going to be a great game. I mean, they had a great season last year. They returned a good crew. They're well coached. And it's, you know, right out of the gate, it's going to be, you know, it's a, it's a measuring sip game, I think, for both teams. Mm -hmm. It's hard because, you know, game one, you got to, you know, it's two and a half weeks of practice. Now you're playing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, so it's, it, you know, it's usually a sloppy game. But uh, it'll be a good test for us going down there. And, and it's, you know, I, I, like play, I like those games. I like, let's, mm -hmm. let's go see where we are. Let's go on the road, you know, really test you know, test, give us a great test about where we are. And, uh, I, you know, I, I think it'll be a great game right out of the gate. Northville's also a very solid program as well, one of the perennial powers in the KLAA as well. Um, week two, Stony Creek, old friend at Stony Creek, Rick Powell. Uh, Stony Creek, um, they were in the red last year. This year they're in the white. Um, they have, they've always been known to have some strong sub varsity teams as well. Very well ran program. What's your take on Stony Creek? Well, they're going to be well coached. Ricky's going to do a great job there. Mm -hmm. They've got good players. Uh, it's going to be a tough game. Going to Stony Creek is always tough to play there. Uh, it's it's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be you know, be, uh, be fun to see Ricky and have our team compete against those guys. But uh, you know, Stony Creek's basically a red team. You know, mm -hmm. They were a red team last year, and mm -hmm. even though we beat them by, you know, we scored two or three late to, to blow it open. It was a tough game for a while. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, they, they've got good players, so it's, it's going to be a tough game. Stoney's always been very, very solid, all three levels. Um, it wouldn't surprise me next few years they come back up to the red. In the next, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, Troy, the, our first, the first home game that's going to be on ONTV. Also would encourage you guys to come out to Dragon Stadium as well to watch in person. Um, if not, then watch the game on ONTV. It's awesome. Um, the first meeting against Troy since 2015. Um, talk about that matchup with Troy. Well, we got Troy because that was one of the alignment games based on enrollment. Mm -hmm. And Troy is the largest school in the blue division, and we have a crossover with the blue, and that's how we got uh, Troy. Um, so, yeah, you know what, they, they've, they were, they've been a playoff team the last several years. Mm -hmm. uh, they can play good football. You know, yes, they play in a lower division. So, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we were going to anticipate that they're going to come up and, and give us a good battle. Mm -hmm. So, it, it should be a good game. Then you go right into league play. Um, oh, go to Oxford, double O trophy game. Played them twice last year. Uh, won both times, but Oxford returns a lot. Going to be a battle every year. It always is a battle. Um, talk about the Wildcats a little bit. Well coached. Um, yeah, it's a rivalry game. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's more into it there. I, I think they have one of the best football players in the league. Uh, their starting running back who also plays inside linebacker is one of the mm -hmm. best players in the league. So, you know, he's you know he's a guy. They returned their quarterback who did a good job last year as well. So, um, they were young in some spots last year. We expect them to be better, and it's going to be a tough game. Then we return home. Also going to be on ONTV. Uh, I play Rochester Adams. Um, Another team that w had a very young quarterback, also very solid program, well coached. Yeah, um, Tony has a really good job with that team. Talk about Adams a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they were young last year. They were young. Uh, had a very good JV team. The mm -hmm. quarterback is back. He's a great athlete, so they're going to be better. And uh, you know, they're they're, they're going to be good. They give us they'll give us everything we we need. Then you travel to West Bloomfield to take on the Lakers. Um, classic game last year at. At Lake Orion, seventeen thirteen. Talk about the Lakers a little bit. They, you know, they got a lot of new players. Mm -hmm. um, they, they got a uh, a, a six eight, three hundred twenty pound tackle transfer in from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. They got a new transfer in, a new quarterback yep. who transfers in. Um, so that's really the mystery with West Bloomfield is you're figuring out who you know you got to learn who the players are. They graduated a good, a good group. 
but again, well coached. Uh, they've got a good tradition now there the last you know 10, 12 years. They've been very successful going down there. You know, it's going to be it'll be another great game. And then week seven, which is homecoming game, also going to be on ON TV as well. Um, host the Wolves of Clarkston. Um, talk about the Wolves a little bit. It's always you know that that's one of the best rivalries in the state of Michigan when Clarkston and Lake Orion get together. It's a historic rivalry. There's always you know year. It's like it's like Michigan Ohio State. Usually the mm -hmm. league championship is on the line. Um, you know they they it's it's just going to be another great Clarkson Lake Orion football game. With all five teams in the red, is it is there a possibility that all five could make the playoffs? Well, last year five out of six made it, and Stony mm -hmm. Creek went down to the, to the obviously went down to the uh, white white. But uh, yeah, absolutely, it's definitely a, an op you know it's definitely something that could happen and would not surprise me. Um, then then we have the um, we go back to non league Farmington um, travel down to Farmington first time since 2012 going down to Farmington in which I remember that game very well. Uh, won the game 43-18, but that was all. We had also had a really they had a great first half in that game against us that year in 2012. Um, Farmington, talk about the Falcons a little bit. Yeah, we were down big. We were down big. We went down there in 2012, mm -hmm. and uh, we came back and, and scored. You know, I think we we scored 35 in the second half to beat them. But uh, uh, they have talent. You know, they they've got players. Uh, you know, again, take nothing for granted. Um, you know, they're, they're back down in the blue division, so I think they'll come in with confidence because it should be at, at the top of the blue division. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it should be a good football game. And then the final game of the regular season, week nine, back home against Celine. Um, there's a new coaching staff over there. They've got the younger car being probably going to be the main quarterback, but they also got that same winning culture from the last few years at Celine. Um, talk about the Hornets a little bit. They're, they're talented. One of their uh, wide receivers uh, has multiple Division One offers. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great program. And they, the coaching staff that they hired, uh, you know, they, they've, they've come from winning programs. So mm -hmm. it's turned into a great rivalry, a great year-end game for both teams. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think it'll be a, a tremendous environment. And it, it, if nothing else, it, to play a good team before the playoffs gets you playoff ready. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to be playing good football. You know, we all we want to come out of there healthy for the playoffs. But, you know, hopefully we're, you know, hopefully at that point we're, you know, we've punched our ticket to the playoffs mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a nothing to lose, let's go get them type mentality. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was great for us last year. I mean, it was, uh, you know, we went, played a great game down at Celine and uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was an outstanding high school football game, but we went in down at halftime. Mm -hmm. And our guys weren't used to being down at halftime. I remember telling our guys that, hey, you know what? It's okay. This is great. This is great for us to see what we're made of. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to be in this situation because we might be in this situation again in the playoffs. And uh, to see the way the guys, you know, we made some adjustments and uh, the way the guys came out and battled and just outlasted Celine in a great football game. It definitely was really, really hard fought. Really, both teams I felt benefited from that game last year and um, we saw it in the playoffs. Um, should be another fun regular season. For the for our dragons this upcoming season. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about the JV and the um, freshman schedules a little bit. Um, the JVs have the same schedule as the varsity. Um, freshman, uh, the freshman week three since Troy does not have a freshman team are going down to Detroit Catholic Central to play the Shamrocks, mm -hmm. and then um, week eight there's still some things to be worked out schedule-wise. Um, talk about the JV and the freshman schedules. Well, obviously they're playing in the, they, their schedules mirror ours, so mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're very good schedules. You know, yeah. Farmington doesn't have a freshman team, so that's mm -hmm. where the, the week eight, where mm -hmm. we think we got a week eight opponent for our freshman, um, but we'll see here in the next couple mm -hmm. weeks. Um, you know, it, it's freshman games and JV games, especially when they're at home, they, you know, it's special. We get, we get a big crowd, mm -hmm. you know, love watching them play. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's, it's just, again, they're just, they're developing because those are our, our future varsity players. Mm -hmm. So it's a great chance for us to watch them. And, you know, the freshmen are learning. It's, it's different going from middle school to high school. Mm -hmm. You know, the football's better, the athletes are better, the commitment is more. So it's a great opportunity for those guys to make that jump. Um, so it's great, you know, and, it's, and they get better as the year goes on. You know, where they start out, 
you know, the young kids learning by the year end, they usually are playing good football. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we, we uh, you know, are, we expect them to do well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but it's about, it's about learning for them and learning how to be, you know, high school football we players. We saw that last year with the, um, with the, both the freshman and JV program. Um, freshman last year finished four and five, but they ended up winning, F, they went, the freshman won their last two games, which in very exciting two games as well over South Lion East and Celine. Then JV's, obviously the wins over Clarkston, Farmington, both those schools were undefeated as well. And they, and you saw the progress in both. Yep. And definitely anticipating more of the same this year with both the freshman and the JV programs. Absolutely. Um, talk about the expectations for this season. You know what, we, uh, I expect us to be in the hunt for the league, for the league championship, mm -hmm. and I expect us to be a playoff team. And our goal, you know, obviously we, want, we need to stay healthy, but our goal is, is uh, to be playing great football at the end of the year and give us a chance to make a run in the playoffs. So, you know, that, that's, just, that's just who we are. As a program, mm -hmm. that's who we are. Year after year, you're going to get the same answer. But I, I, we really have some good players, some great kids who work hard, some good athletes, and uh, we expect to be in the thick of it. You know, we've got a tough schedule. But I know every team on that schedule is looking at it saying, you know, holy cow, we got to play Lake Orion. So, mm -hmm. you know, it should be a, a you know a fun, uh, you know, Friday night should be a ball here in Lake Orion, and, and uh, you know, it, the best thing about it, regardless of where we end up, they're great kids. Mm -hmm. You know, like I tell us, they're, they're gonna, you know, we're, we're as coaches, we're gonna love them unconditionally, coach them unconditionally, mm -hmm. and hope they have the greatest year they can uh, for them. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's their, it's, it's team, it's team number 80. There's mm -hmm. only one team 80. This is it. Yep. And uh, so it's their team, their story. They'll write it. And I know they'll work hard and it's our job to guide them. And, and they just, you know, enjoy the journey with them. Life's like a book. You're writing your own chapter for your, for the, for the book of Lake Orion football. You're writing your own chapter. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Coach Bell. My pleasure, Anthony. On. It's great every year. And um, for... Oh, and I encourage you guys to come out to Dragon Stadium this upcoming season. Come and support your Dragons. Come out on the road. Um, would love to have the support on the road. Um, all, if you can't, then we, especially for home games, encourage you to watch games on ORN Neighborhood Television, ON TV. All right. Thank you guys so much. And um, take care, Dragon Nation. Hope to see you at a football game this season. Take care.